Should evangelicals refrain from trying to convert Catholics? What are the differences in Catholicism and evangelical Christianity? And are the differences important? For the answers to these and many other questions concerning Catholicism, stay tuned. Greetings in the name of Jesus, our blessed hope. I'm Dave Reagan, founder and director of Lamb and Lion Ministries, and I am delighted to have in the studio with me this week my dear friend and colleague Mike Gendron. Mike is the founder and director of Proclaiming the Gospel Ministries, located in Plano, Texas, a suburb of Dallas. His ministry was established in 1991 to serve and glorify the Lord Jesus Christ by proclaiming His death and resurrection as God's only provision whereby sinners can be forgiven redeemed and justified. Mike aims a lot of his ministry at Catholics trying to reach them with the good news of God's grace. Mike, thanks for being our special guest today. Well, thank you, Dave, for having me. I'm delighted to be here. I've shared your vision for reaching the lost for so many years, so it's really a pleasure to be here and to tackle this most important subject. Well, I'll tell you one thing for sure. God has really blessed your vision of reaching the lost, because I can remember when your ministry started, and I can remember uh, that we had no idea that God was going to bless it as much as He has. But He has really blessed it, magnified your voice, opened all kinds of doors of opportunity. Well, and He's used Lamb and Lion Ministries to do that as well. And I just appreciate you sharing some of the articles that I've written in your magazine and also being an instrument to get the word out for the resources that we have to reach out to this huge mission field. Well, I, I would say that uh, you are one of our favorite guest uh, writers, and uh, we put your articles in as often as we can, and people just love them. Uh, Mike, our topic for discussion is Catholicism versus Evangelical Christianity, and I'd like to jump right into it by having you just start off by defining Evangelical Christianity. What in the world does that term mean? Well, to me it means um, the five solas of the Reformation. As you know, for 1600 years the Bible was pretty much off limits to the, to the population of the world. And so, when the Reformers came on the scene they went back to the essence of Evangelical Christianity, and that is that we are saved by grace alone, that is through the unmerited, undeserved favor of God, by trusting in Christ alone, that He is the all-sufficient Savior, able to save sinners completely and forever. And we get the Gospel according to the Scripture alone. That is our authority in all matters of faith. And ultimately this is all for the glory of God alone. Well, wow. that pretty well sums it up, doesn't it? Sure and does. one of those things that uh, I think is particularly important, and we're going to talk more about this later on, is uh, the way in which evangelicals look to the Word of God as their authority, not to church synods or the majority opinion or popular fads or whatever, but to the Word of God. That is our supreme authority. And unfortunately we're finding in the evangelical world today a lot of people who seem to be straying from that. And uh, today it's, uh, in fact, the, the term evangelical has become sort of fuzzy uh, in, in the United States at least. People claim to be evangelicals and yet uh, they don't always uh, rely upon the Word of God as their ultimate source of authority. Yeah, the term has been watered down just like the word Christian was watered down. We really don't know what that word means anymore. And so it's getting to the point where we need to redefine again who we are. We're certainly at the point where somebody tells you they're an evangelical, you've got to say what kind. <laughs> That's right. Because Catholics also have taken that term and they say that there are evangelical Catholics. Okay, now that we understand what evangelical Christianity is, let's move to our really important topic, and that's Catholicism. And could you give us sort of a, an overview, just like you did of evangelical Christianity, of how Catholicism differs from evangelical Christianity? Well, Dave, and that's a good point. And I'd probably like to start just by saying that there are evangelicals within the Roman Catholic Church, but they're no longer Roman Catholic. Yes. And so I want to start off with that premise. But if you define a Roman Catholic as one who believes and adheres to the official teachings of his church, then they are the antithesis of evangelical Christianity because they have a different authority, which ultimately leads to a different Jesus that they worship and trust. And that also leads to a different gospel. Whenever you have a different Jesus that was unable to save sinners completely and forever, then you need another gospel to instruct people what they must do that Christ was unable to finish. 
And so when you have a different Jesus and a different gospel, ultimately you have a different Bible. The Catholics have a different Bible as well and ultimately a different authority. We differ on the most critical issue of the gospel and that is how one can be forgiven by God, the doctrine of justification. Mike, before we uh, pursue the differences in uh, Catholicism and Evangelical Christianity, which you just so beautifully summarized, I would like uh, for us to pause and just give you an opportunity to tell us about your credentials uh, for speaking out on these particular issues. Now, we all know that you, you're an expert on Evangelical Christianity because you're a graduate of Dallas Theological Seminary, one of the most prestigious seminaries in the uh, United States. But what are your credentials regarding Catholicism? Well, Dave, I came out of a very devout Roman Catholic family. In oh. fact, my, my uncle was a Roman Catholic priest for 58 years. and Your uncle? That's right. <laughs> and he spent 30 years in the jungles of Burma trying to convert the Burmese to Roman Catholicism. So he was a very devout Catholic. Very devout. In fact, we actually had a chance to go over and visit his mission field there in Burma and see his work. And at the time, I too was a very devout Catholic. I was taught by the Jesuits all the way through high school. And altar boy for seven years. I served uh, not only my uncle the priest, but also had a chance to meet Padre Pio in San Giovanni Rotundo. Right? He's the stigmatist in the Roman Catholic Church that uh, lived in the 1960s. And so later on I was responsible for bringing the first Little Rock Scripture study to a Dallas Catholic Church. What does that mean, Little Rock Scripture study? Well, the Catholic Church, since Vatican II, has encouraged people to begin reading the Bible, albeit through the grid of Roman Catholic tradition, but that's been a real plus for Roman Catholics to begin opening the Bible. I can tell you for 37 years as a Catholic I never opened the Bible. It's set on my coffee table mm -hmm. collecting dust, but we were told never to try to read it or understand it because it was too difficult that we needed a priest to interpret it for us. and so. This was really a big plus for the Catholics to begin studying the Bible. I had taught high school Catholic Christian doctrine prior to that, and it was really opening the Bible for the first time and at the same time being drawn to a evangelical seminar in Dallas in 1981 where I learned that the Bible needed to become my supreme authority in all matters of faith. So for the first time in my life I began reading it. And Dave, that's when I had a crisis of faith. Because as I read the scriptures, I realized I was reading a different plan of salvation than what I've been taught as a Catholic. I have found that true among Catholics in general. They start reading the Bible and all of a sudden they have a crisis of faith because they realize this doesn't line up with what they've been taught. Exactly. In fact, it was the antithesis. Now, at that time, were you a businessman or what? Yes, I'd been in the corporate world. In fact, I had a 17-year career selling computers and uh, by the world standards, very successful. But yet there was an emptiness within me and I never for a moment thought it had anything to do with religion or spirituality. Now you're saying that you were a very devout Catholic. That means you went to Mass regularly? Not only regularly, but I went every day during Lent while I was in college because I believed that I was building up indulgences. Okay. So, Well the reason I wanted to emphasize that is because quite often I find that Catholics are Catholics in name only. Uh, I, I remember a fellow who took a door-to-door -door survey in uh, New Mexico, in a city in New Mexico, and he would ask people, uh, are you a Christian? They'd say, yes. Where do you go to the Catholic Church? What's the name of your priest? They had no idea because they hadn't been there in years. But you were really active. You were really involved. You were taught by Jesuits. And you're telling me that despite all that involvement, you never had really gotten into the Bible and read it. Well, I was discouraged to read it. But once I began reading it, it was just like the Lord was revealing to me for the first time that we could have the assurance of eternal life through faith in Jesus Christ, through His shed blood and His finished work. And so, with when during this process of having this crisis I would call my uncle on the phone and I'd ask him why do you teach a different way of salvation than what God has revealed through the scriptures and being the good priest that he was he would pacify me for a while with a few words but the more I dug the more I realized there was no way to reconcile what the word of God was teaching with what the Catholic Church had taught me so ultimately it came down to this am I going to trust my eternal destiny on the teachings and traditions of men or on Christ and His Word. And being a math major with an analytical <laughs> mind, I knew it was either or and I chose